When you develop a Zettelkast note-taking system, everything comes down to ideas. The majority of them come from sources like books and research papers. And not to get lost in this sea of references, I highly recommend using a specialized software, a reference manager like Zotero, and a system of literature notes inside of Obsidian. Today I will show you how I effectively use Zotero together with Obsidian to turn research papers into Zettelkast and notes. If you're ready, buckle up! My name is Artem, I'm a computational neuroscience student and researcher. Here we talk about the brain, both the theory of how it works under the hood, as well as practice of how to study and learn more effectively. If you're interested, consider subscribing to the channel not to miss anything. The video is structured in the following way. First, I will talk about what Zotero is and how I use it to store and organize my research papers. Next, we'll see how to set up the sync between your Zotero library and Obsidian. And finally, I will show you my workflow for processing the information, from reading the paper, to what's called literature notes, to Zellcast and Atomic Idea notes. So let's go! You probably know that Zotero is a reference manager, a piece of software that allows you to effectively store, cite, and collect literature sources, mostly books and research papers. Remember how you downloaded your first research paper to read and lovingly put it on a desktop or in a folder somewhere? Well, when you have 5 or 10 articles, it works just fine. But once you get into that, start to look for information everywhere. Things soon get pretty messy. PDFs lie everywhere. On desktop, in folders, in the cloud, and it's almost impossible to find anything. You forget what you have already read, what you've only started reading, and what you have saved for later. That's why I think it's vitally important to start a systematized approach as soon as possible, even or especially if only you are just starting to read research papers regularly. I recommend using some sort of a reference manager. Uh, personally, I went with Zotero, mostly because it's free and under active development. Basically, Zotero is like a first hub where I put everything I might want to read at some point. Now, there are three ways to add a paper or a book to Zotero. The first one, which I use most commonly, is the quick add. You just click on the magic wand, paste the DOI or ASBN, and boom, the paper is in your collection. All the fields, such as title, author's year, journal, are filled in automatically. Sometimes, if the PDF is available online, Zotero will attach it. There is also a Zotero connector web extension, which allows you to clip the PDF from the web page. And finally, an absolutely amazing new feature is if you use ResearchRabbit to discover relevant research papers. By the way, I have a video about it right here. You can set up this link with your Zotero account. So now every article you add on ResearchRabbit will automatically appear in your Zotero database. How cool is that? Now, after you add a paper to Zotero using any of the options, it's time to find every article its place. Zotero uses two main ways to structure your items. The first one is called subcollections. It's very similar to folders. You can nest them in one another, but the key difference is that one paper can be a part of multiple subcollections. If you don't mind, for convenience, I will say folders from now on, meaning the subcollections. And the second one is the tags system. And classification with folders versus tags is like Vim versus Emacs. It's an everlasting debate. But here's the approach that I found to be most useful. I use folders to break up papers into contexts where I will expect to apply the corresponding knowledge. You can think of that as projects, in a loose sense. I have a separate subcollection for lab research projects, where I dump all the relevant papers. When I prepare a presentation, for example, I create a subcollection for that and collect my sources there. Similarly, I have nested subcollections for YouTube videos. Tags, on the other hand, serve for organization by topic. When I add a new paper, I usually populate it with tags in a very free form, anything that comes to mind. For example, I'd say that, judging from the abstract, this paper is about hippocampus, place cells, remapping, and I'll tag it with optogenetics as well, since that was the primary method. Then I can filter the entire library, or any subcollection by tags, to discover papers on a particular topic. There is also a couple of utilitary tags with color to visually differentiate between the papers. 
Uh, for example, I have a green emoji tag to symbolize that I've already read this paper. Fire means that it's really interesting and I should read it as soon as possible. Or continue reading it if I already started. So, let's see how to easily reference all of this treasure inside of Obsidian. To do this, we are going to use two plugins. One for Zotero, called Better Bib Tech, and one for Obsidian, called Citations. Not to make this video too long, I won't go through the installation process. But in the description, you can find links to the plugin pages, which contain really easy to follow installation instructions. So, once you have Better Bib Tech installed, select My Library and click Export. There, select the format to Better JSON, click Keep Updated, and select a place where you want to save it. The logic behind this process is like this. This file is basically a JSON document containing metadata for all of the items in your Zotero database. Things like titles, authors, years, source URLs, etc. And the Better BibTech extension overrides this file every time you add items to your library. So at every point in time, this file updates to contain most recent state of your Zotero. Then we will tell Obsidian to take this file and pull out references from there. So let's do that. In Obsidian, install the plugin called Citations and don't forget to enable it. Now go to Settings, Plugin Options, Citations. Copy the path to the JSON file we have just exported from Zotero and paste it to the Citation Database Path field. If everything is okay, Obsidian will tell you that it has loaded successfully. And don't forget to configure the folder where Obsidian will put all the literature notes. We will see what they are in just a second. So, suppose when you write down the idea, you want to mention the source it came from. I always recommend doing that, because at some point later down the road, you might want to research more about the topic. If it came from a paper which is a part of your Zotero database, then lo and behold, you don't have to go to Zotero and manually copy and paste the DOI of the paper into Obsidian, which is cumbersome and looks kinda ugly. Just press Ctrl Shift E if you are on a Mac, or go to the commands page and search for citations, insert literature note. This will bring up a field where you can search for the target article and press enter. You can see that we automatically inserted a link to a funny looking note starting with the add symbol. This string is called the site key, a unique identifier for each article. These notes are what I like to call literature or reference notes. If you click on it, you'll see that it's just a usual markdown file stored in the folder for literature notes we specified earlier. Essentially, what the plugin does is that it pulls the metadata from the tarot item you select and inserts it into the freshly created note. If you reference the same article somewhere else, it would just insert a link to this existing literature note and not create a new one. But what is the use of such literature notes? Well, for starters, and this happens most often, these literature nodes can just remain empty and serve purely organizational purposes. That is, when I create an idea node in the Zettelkasten folder and I want to link it to the corresponding source, I don't have to go to Zotero every time and manually copy and paste the title and authors and stuff like that. Instead, just easily insert a link to the source in a couple of clicks. Moreover, you can navigate to the literature node and use the local graph view to see what valuable ideas this article served as a source of, like some sort of a visual atomic summary of the paper. Two, they can serve as a reading journal. When you read with the Zettelkasten system in mind, you're always looking for opportunities to extract valuable ideas from this text, rewrite them in your own words, search for interconnections and store them for later. But quite often, this transition is just impossible to do on the go as you read. What you would consider as a single atomic idea note could be actually spread out over a handful of pages. And as the author takes detours, provides examples and elaborations, you might run out of memory stack, so to speak. That's why I like to outline key points as I'm reading, mostly to keep track of what's going on. I use the space in these markdown literature notes to keep a sort of a reading journal where I map out the plan, key terminology author uses, jot down my own remarks and thoughts. 
A note of caution, though. Don't feel obligated to transfer these literature notes into atomic zettles right on the spot. It may turn out that certain ideas take several chapters to fully develop before they are ready to be promoted into the Zettelkasten folder. Sometimes, even after you finish processing the source, it's not enough to fully connect the dots and crystallize certain ideas. And it's totally normal, only months later, when you encounter something similar somewhere, you realize, wait, I've already seen it there. You go to the reference note, and everything is laid out in front of you. You go through that information again, and together with fresh formulations and details you've just met in the different source, it reaches the critical mass to be rewritten in a sophisticated, simple and atomic format. One potential source for such new perspective is the today's sponsor, Shortform. This is an amazing platform which provides what I would call book summaries on steroids. They are far more comprehensive than the ones you'll find on Blinkist and contain interactive exercises and author insights. There is already quite a variety of genres being covered, such as science, education and psychology. And I've been pleasantly surprised with how often they publish new book guides. I personally use Shortform to filter out the books that I want and don't want to read, as well as using their brilliant summaries to enhance and refine my literature notes before transferring ideas into Zettles. To get 5 days of unlimited access and 20% discount on annual subscription, join Shortform through my special link or click the link down in the description. After I'm done reading the paper, which hopefully led to adding some idea notes into the Zettelkasten folder, sometimes I do what I like to call post-processing of this paper. This relates to a variety of things you can do to commit certain facts to memory and to get an even deeper understanding of how different pieces of the paper fit together. One thing you can do is make use of spaced repetition. Now, this is a topic for a separate video, which I will probably do in the near future. But basically, you can create flashcards based on certain facts from the paper. And the plugin called Obsidian to Anki allows you to write your flashcards right inside of Obsidian. I use these literature notes as containers where I store the questions and answers for the flashcards. Another option to get a deeper understanding is to draw a mind map of the contents of this particular paper. I usually draw my mind maps on the iPad and then simply embed them inside of literature notes as images. That way, when I visit the reference note file, I can refresh the contents of this paper in my memory within seconds and see what it was all about. Of course, this is quite time-consuming, so I don't do it very often. Only when deep down I know it's a great idea, for example, if the paper is directly relevant to my research. And the same is true for all of the topics I've mentioned before. There is nothing you quote unquote must do every time you create a literature note. The way I personally write them is completely free-form. I'd say just trust your gut and go with the flow. If you feel like you want to draw a schematics and outline a few points, do it. If, on the other hand, you feel like the paper is wishy-washy and not really relevant, then don't stress too much about it and leave the literature note blank. This is completely fine as well. Don't restrict yourself in some rigid workflow, because this is a creative process, not a production pipeline. That's all I have for you today. If you have any specific questions or topics you want me to mention, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. If you liked the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and press the like button. Stay tuned for more interesting stuff coming up. Goodbye, and thanks for the interesting knowledge.